at the fair, every ride is a ghost train. Now, the loudest voices in Pripyat are the cuckoos. In the physics classroom, time is out of the equation. This was a showcase nuclear city for elite scientists and engineers. Now, all that's left is a vision of what the world might look like if all the people suddenly disappeared. It sits just two miles from the Chernobyl reactor complex. On April 26, 1986, it blew up and caught fire. The unlucky few who dealt with the worst of the cleanup died from radiation sickness. Everyone else in the vicinity was evacuated to escape the worst of the fallout. There remains a 1,000 square mile exclusion zone all around the plant. But while it may now be one of the loneliest places on Earth, it's far from empty. There can't be a more powerful symbol of the risks of radiation than the city of Pripyat. 50,000 people used to live here. But come back nearly 30 years after they were all evacuated, and what strikes you is that it's an equally powerful symbol of our influence over nature. Because if you take humans out of the equation, the wildlife surges back despite the contamination. We're here to go on a fallout field trip into one of the most radioactive areas of the zone. 30 years on, there's no need for gloves and masks, but the boiler suits prevent us carrying contaminated dust and soil home. Ecologist Mike Wood leads the project. So this is the village of Buryakovka, and it's a village that sits right on the Western Trace. And the Western Trace so was the, part of the plume of that's, fallout that came from the initial explosion of the plant? Yeah, that's the narrow plume that extends off to the west. And at this particular location, the level of contamination was such that some of the buildings were deliberately demolished and they started clean-up activities. Their guide is a Ukrainian scientist who knows more about the wildlife here than perhaps anyone else. He's pioneered the use of camera traps to study ecology in this forbidden zone. But before they switch on the equipment, there's three decades worth of weeding to get on with. There's a popular conception that radioactive fallout from Chernobyl somehow devastated the natural environment here. But when you come to the zone, you realise that's anything but the case. And what these scientists are trying to figure out is just how wildlife manages with that radioactivity. And also to study its return to what used to be a human environment. And take a look at what they've found. Over the last year, their camera traps have caught the return of European bison, as heavy as a car and absent for centuries. Wolves, never seen here before the accident, that have slowly migrated in from neighbouring Belarus. Wild Chevalsky's horses are thriving, along with wild boar and Europe's largest cat, the lynx. And then, last winter, an incredible discovery a brown bear, the first ever recorded in eastern Ukraine. Do you say this looks like a healthier ecosystem than areas outside the zone in Ukraine? Absolutely, absolutely much more healthy. Because for, uh, since uh, for wildlife, more important absence of people, absence of their activity. But they need more evidence. They're putting camera traps in areas of the zone that receive varying levels of fallout. And they're not just looking, but listening. <laughs> what we've got here is a wildlife acoustic recorder. Okay. So this is going to capture the soundscape of the area that we're in. It's going to capture the noises from the invertebrates, the flies that are buzzing around. It'll capture the sound of the birds singing. It'll capture noises of large mammals that are coming through this area. Right. And it will give us a, a picture, a sound picture, mm -hmm. of the biodiversity that's present within the area. It's much needed research. Some previous studies claim to have found serious impacts of radioactivity. But so far, this team's work has found little effect outside the most contaminated areas. The studies are, are quite confused as to whether or not that's the case. So actually our study here in Chernobyl, it's, it's about trying to understand more about the way in which the animals in Chernobyl are faring. If that's showing no real significant change at a population level, 
then perhaps we then need to start rethinking our assessment of exactly what level could be described as safe. And even in highly contaminated animals, there's scientific debate about what the harmful effects of radiation really are. I'm standing now above the cooling ponds of the old reactors. Take a look at these fish. These Wells catfish have grown up to eight feet long. They've been described as radioactive mutants. And it's true, studies have shown damage to their DNA from radioactive mud in which they feed. But by every other measure, they are healthy and numerous. The truth is, they're this big because they like bread from visitors and no one is allowed to catch them. It makes it hard now to imagine the disaster in this reactor released 400 times the amount of radioactivity as the Hiroshima bomb. This long after the disaster, most areas of the exclusion zone aren't actually that radioactive anymore, but because of the way the fallout fell immediately after the explosion, some areas are still really very radioactive. This is about 1,500 times normal background radiation. It's not harmful in small doses, but you wouldn't want to spend too long here at all. But it's all relative. The radiation dose we received during our entire trip to the zone was similar to what you'd get from a single transatlantic flight. Maria Shovkuta has as much respect for radiation as she does for the authorities. She tells us how she sent them packing more than once. Ordered to leave in 1986, she came back a year later to live in the house in which she was born. She's 87 tomorrow. The levels they found weren't high, and this is the garden she's fed herself from every day. Her only real complaint is the lack of rain and the potato beetles eating their way through her spuds. Thank you very much. It was lovely to meet you. Maria waves us off and we leave her to get back to one of the quietest lives in the world. Then it's back along the decaying roads and into the bush to check the camera traps. In the thick vegetation of summer, we failed to spot any large animals, but they're most certainly here. A shot from overnight of just the sort of animals the team are here to study. Look at that, mum, mother and baby moose. Yeah, yeah, yeah. What a fantastic shot. Chernobyl was a human disaster in every sense. It cost lives, hundreds of billions of dollars, and perpetuated a fear that follows nuclear power to this day. But another part of its legacy is now emerging. The mess left behind banished humans and gave nature the upper hand. This zone is now one of the few places in the world that's getting wilder. Tom Clark, Channel 4 News in Chernobyl.